my involvement in the Olympics started back in 2005 and really in those really early days designing everything that you can see on the park so from the bridges the roads um, some of the venues the, the building that we're stood in here today the orbit um, and coordinating all of that design through transport planning through security through planning applications um, and getting the team uh, had a team of actually 400 engineers at its peak and making sure that we actually deliver the designs so that the park could be ready for the athletes in time for their races. So the first time I came to this site, it was um, completely different from what you can see today. There were piles of cars and fridges in the waterways. It was a very derelict area. It was very difficult to navigate around it. It didn't have the bridges and the connections that you can see out there today. Um, so trying to piece together, I mean, it, the size of this park is three kilometers north to south and two kilometers east to west and very much trying to work out how we were going to build all these venues and the connectivity. For me personally, it was the most hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, normally in a normal project, you'd have time to do site investigation, planning, design, and then construction. Quite often in parts of the site, we were doing all simultaneously. Um, you, there's no way that we could turn around to an athlete in 2012 and say, I'm terribly sorry, you've trained for four years, but the Olympics, you know, your race will be in six months' time. It was just always from day one, even from back in 2005, that deadline and that assurity of meeting it meant that every decision, every meeting had that pressure. The Olympics was very much in a political project, and you probably can't even imagine now, but back in 2005, and probably even up until 2010 and 11, it was a white elephant. It was headline news that it was costing too much money. We should be spending money on other things. So personally working on it, you know, friends and family would be you know, questioning you and the expense of it and shouldn't we be doing other things. But the transformation and knowing this area of London and knowing what a difference it would make was really powerful and knowing and having the dream of what the difference it would make was absolutely key. Um, I remember bringing the team here. We got park entry tickets just walking around and we just stood on that main bridge and we were just in floods of tears. It was just such an emotional thing. And the thing for me was actually watching the faces of the people that were walking around the park, seeing the families and people, the happy and enjoyment and thinking actually all that sweat and tears and hard work and long nights and weekends was all worth it. We'd created something where people were enjoying it and they could get round it, um, enjoy it, and actually the infrastructure and the things they took for granted because not everything worked seamlessly from their journey into London to actually sitting in their venue and watching, watching the spectacle. When I studied at uh, University of Redford, I, I did think about what I wanted to do afterwards, but I had gone into engineering because I wanted to work on landscape projects. I wanted to, I wanted to know why buildings stayed up and, and fantastic iconic buildings like this. So, and some of the exercises that we did at the university, which was, I remember one where we did about um, having a nuclear, a nuclear facility in, you know, and we had to be pro, we had to be the client and we had to be objectors. And actually those were pretty good exercises because it's not much different <laughs> from what you actually do. So some of the things g did give a taster and, and I thought actually I can see, I can see an ap application here. But I was very much excited about building iconic projects um, and starting off in civils and structures. And actually, I started off by going out to Hong Kong and working out on some amazing projects out in Hong Kong. And that was my first kind of exit after university, my first, first real job. My time at Bradford, I think, did shape in terms of giving some real industrial experience. A lot of people on the course had a year out sandwiched. I had actually chosen to do a year beforehand. I had got sponsorship. And so I think the people on the course and the lecturers on the course had that business um, reality as well as just studying and, th and theory. And I think that really prepared us for going out into industry. Uh, I seem from memory there were 100 people on my course, and I think there were three women um, pretty much from memory. So yeah, we were, we were a bit of a minority. <laughs> So I'm passionate about trying to help women into engineering and see what an exciting career it is. I mean, I've been around the globe. So I do work with schools and, and do talks at universities. And more importantly, in the workplace, I've actually helped set up a diversity network within the firm, um, within business cases, allow, allow a network to evolve and get speakers in and allow s staff to access to senior role models and, and be a role model for others so they can see what, what you can do with engineering.